140. Good morning to you. This is Breakfast with Stephen and Ellie. And there's some great stories running through today's papers. We're going to show you some of them now. Uh, this is a good one. This is thousands of activists took to London yesterday. Really good picture, this. Uh, they're staying for a few days. Now, does this make your blood boil or are you filled with empathy? This is in The <laughs> Times. It's showing environmental activists protesting in Parliament Square yesterday wearing what can I Weird describe stuff. really as red kind of rope gown and a headpiece and red gloves and white makeup it's, quick, it's all very it? dramatic it looks like something in a horror film yeah and this makes my blood boil actually it's um a house in the <laughs> daily mail uh, it belongs to a uk-based russian oligarch mikhail friedman um but would you believe it's eight billion pounds it doesn't look big enough. It doesn't, does it? You want a lot more for your money than that. I would have thought so. I, I mean, want to know where it is. Eight billion. Eight million, I could sort of say. Oh, yeah. But eight billion quid. Apparently, he likes reading books and going to his cinema room, which is probably the size of City World, you would imagine. Um, well, you, you, would, you would want to spend time in a cinema room. Eight in billion cinema. quid. Incredible. It's just disgusting, really. Not Who's fine. ever going to buy it? Oh, wow, listen to this. Well, it's said to be the capital's second largest private residence. Only Buckingham Palace is bigger. Mm. There you are saying it's not big enough. It's the second biggest well, it doesn't look, in London. Well, it doesn't look that big, yeah. does it? Yeah. I mean, it looks big, but it doesn't look eight billion quid's worth big. Oh, it does from this angle. Look, oh, at right. a different angle here. Different angle. It is palatial. Well, it has to be, doesn't it, for that? <sighs> My gosh. There's money and then there's money. And the Sun shows Prince Harry on their front page. They say he's homesick and desperate to attend the coronation next month. Mm, sticking with Rod, this is a lovely picture uh, of the Queen, the late Queen, we should say. It's hard to say that, isn't it? It is. Uh, with some of her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Um, in fact, they're all great-grandchildren, great -grandchildren, I think. Yeah. Um, but there you go. Taken by the Princess of Wales, this picture. Um, and it's not, I like it because the Queen just looks... She's not beaming away. It's not an official portrait. She's just been snapped. Mm. And I quite like that. It's, it's like a very normal picture. Yeah, she looks like a great-grandmother, doesn't she? Front yeah, she and centre, surrounded by lovely children. Do you know what? I was so struck by how fair they all are. I didn't realise how blonde our royal family is, and the younger, younger members of the man. <laughs> no, they are, they, they? are. They all look... They have got a likeness, haven't they? Well, they've got, well, they, well, they've, they've got hair. They've got hair. Which won't last. We're not used to it. It won't last. In our royal family. But it's a lovely picture, and it did, it did make me realise when I saw this picture just how much we will miss her. Yeah. Um, and this is one for you. If you're enjoying the weather, um, brace yourselves. The Daily Star says it's going to freeze. We've got an Arctic blast, and then we're going to get a heat wave. So you won't know whether you're coming or going, basically. <laughs> There you go. What's um, new with British weather? I eh? know. Radio legend David Hamilton and writer Candice Holdsworth are both here. Morning, you two. Morning. 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 Um, have you tried to get an appointment at the doctor's lately, David? Uh, yes, uh, this is a story in the Mirror today. Around 10 million people uh, are giving up... Um, hoping to get an appointment with their GP. Mm. Uh, I have to say this doesn't totally surprise me because I've never been able to see my GP. I think a lot of it is postcode lottery. I yeah. think some people, if you're lucky, um, you might get to see your GP. I don't think it helps if you live in the country where I do. I live in Sussex. And um, my, my local surgery there, they had three doctors. Uh, one of them is now in Cornwall. Oh. But occasionally it takes phone calls, apparently. Yeah. Oh, right. So I said, nice. why, why is one doctor in Cornwall and not here in Sussex? And they said, well, it's either that or nothing at all. Right. A bit tough, isn't it? Really? That's, calling yeah. shots, aren't they? Yeah, we? Well, you know, there is, a, there is a lack of doctors, too many, too many patients and not enough doctors. Mm. And, uh, you know, where do they get them from? But um, it's very sad, isn't it? And, of course, this throws more... On now until the hospitals. Yeah, exactly. People are going to outpatients. Well, exactly. is there an issue with the way that the system works? In the sense that, I mean, in, in the UK, it's this horrible 8 a.m. rush, isn't it? So everyone get on the phone lines, and it feels like you're going to war to get an appointment. It you? does, it does. And some people have really criticised that. Why do they only take calls at 8 a.m.? Because sometimes you can be on that call for two hours mm. and just learn that you're very slowly inching up the queue and people will just put the phone down yeah. and they may really need an appointment and like David says they're worried so they go to A&E.
and then they put pressure on A&E. Yeah. But apparently there's also been um, a big surge in people using private GPs. So the Babylon app has seen a big surge in usage. Oh, really? And I used that during the lockdown, actually. If, you know, there was something with my son, we needed us to get checked out, we would call them, they would do a video appointment. They're it's no all well and good, but, I mean, what's it cost? 20, 30 quid or more? 40 quid? Yeah, it's expensive. Private GPs are expensive. They're not cheap at all. And if you can afford to use them, great. If you can't, or say you're in a rural area, it's a real problem. It is a postcode lottery. And, and, if, you need it, and if you needed a prescription, then you've got to pay private prescription charges. Yes. That was even more expensive. Yes. It's, it's not a good system. It's a really poor system. And it's mm. a pity that people are being driven down these routes. Um, the Sun, Candice... Um, what they're saying about Dominic Raab? Yeah, so this is, I found this story interesting. It's in The Sun. It's someone who worked in the Ministry of Justice who says that actually it is a dysfunctional department. I'm not defending Dominic Raab, but I just find all these different perspectives on the issue um, useful, actually. Yeah. So this person was saying that Actually, he did have a go at him once, but actually it was deserved because the Ministry of Justice, like the Home Office, are two quite dysfunctional departments. And I have heard other government ministers say that, that people don't want to be placed in those departments because it can be very difficult. Having said that, it does. I'm not saying that Dominic Raab is right, but I think there are so many different factors to consider when you're looking at this story. And it may be that he has got an abrasive personality, yeah. but he was also in a department where he did, he did clash with people. Mm. Yeah, I think it's, he has got an abrasive personality. I mean, that's, you know, that's, I think, undisputable. Yeah. Um, but if it's, is it bullying? That's the thing. Is it bullying? It, I just a, don't know. It, it's a fine line, isn't it, between bullying and making your point firmly to the people that you're working for? And, um, you know, where does bullying begin and, and end? But if it is bullying, then there's, there's no place for that. It's horrible. No. Yeah. Um, David, let's stay with you, shall we? And this is a story in the Telegraph. Brighton are banning second homes. Yes, uh, it's um, it's a Labour council, I think, in Brighton, and uh, they want to ban uh, people having second homes there. This is happening more and more, of course, across the country. We know it's been a, a big problem in the in the West Country, in Devon and Cornwall. Uh, I was in Chichester yesterday, which is oh lovely. nice. Yes, lovely. Not too far away from Brighton. Uh, I was amazed at the number of homes that are being built there. Mm. And um, I think that there is a mass exodus from London. Mm. I think uh, I thought, who are all these people and where are they coming from? Chichester already has dreadful traffic congestion and now you're building all these new homes. And I think that the people who lived in London are moving out and uh, there are new people now in London. And I think that's what's happening. Right. Mm. Uh, interesting. Interesting. I mind you, I don't... I struggle with I struggle with London. I don't live in London. Thank heavens. Mm. Drives drives me mad. And every time I say that, I get people moaning, saying they love London. If you're a Londoner and you love it, great, good on you. It doesn't do it for me. I'm a country boy. Have you got a lot of building where you are? Um, yes, they are. <clears throat> they are expanding where I am. Mm. Um, which is a scheme that was put in place originally by John Prescott, I think. Mm. It's, a long, it's been a long time coming. Have they but still got the stone cows? Yeah, the concrete cows, yeah. <laughs> they're still there. They're in a the field somewhere now. <laughs> We've got lots of real cows. Um, can we have a look at um, Shakespeare, Candice, in The Times? Because I... it's 400 years this weekend since he was... Well, it's more than 400 years since he was born and died. I know, it's amazing. I still think he's relevant. I found this yeah, so I... interesting, the story in The Times. It's a professor called Eric Rasmussen from Nevada University. And he hunts down first folios, so first editions of Shakespeare manuscripts. And um, what they quoted, a few... Um, uh, events in the story where these manuscripts have turned up in the most unusual places. So one was a bodyguard of Fidel Castro wow. had a Shakespeare manuscript and it turned out it had actually been stolen from Durham University but circuitously it ended up in his hands who knows how. Um, there was another one, there was a, a widow who died in Tottenham and it turned out that she had this battered first copy of Shakespeare in her possession no one knows how she got hold of it but she did wow. and she didn't even know she had it so this guy really, he hunts in all these amazing places. He even said sometimes it can just like turn up in an attic or something like that. People have no idea the value of these things that they have. There must be millions, yeah. you would have thought, for something like that. Uh, we've got to leave it there, but we'll see you a little bit later on. Okay. David, Candice, thank you very much indeed.